What is up everybody? Today we're going to be going over how to remove trackers in Blender. Now the footage I'm going to be using is also part of another tutorial on how to do a screen replacement, but this, this method works pretty much any time, which is great. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and come over here to File and open up a VFX workspace. Okay, now let's head over to the Compositing tab and I'm just going to set up my compositor a little bit differently. I'm going to come here to the compositing workspace and change that to an image editor. And then down here with this dope sheet, I'm going to change that to the compositor instead. This is just how I prefer to set up my compositing workspace. You may prefer other ways and you are welcome to do that. I'm going to delete the render nodes and hit shift A and add in a viewer and then shift A and add in a reroute node and just plug the reroute and the viewer together there so that whatever gets routed in regardless of where my viewer is looking the end node is the composite node which is my output the other thing that I'm gonna do is come here to color management and this is important I'm gonna change the view transform from filmic to standard but and I'll show you why in just a second so let me go ahead and open up my footage I'm gonna hit shift a and search for image and then open and you can see here's my footage so I'm just gonna select the first frame and click open and then I'm gonna change from single image to image sequence and then for the frames I'm gonna change that to 201 because I know that is the amount of frames in this image sequence Finally, I'm going to change my end frame here to 201 also. Okay, so now if I control shift click on this image and select my viewer node up here, you can see my image. Now this image actually looks a little bit washed out. When I This was a, a personal project of mine. When I originally worked on this, I couldn't get my original footage to look right. And finally afterwards, I realized if you change the view transform from filmic back to standard, you can see what you get. You get footage that's a little more crunched. And of course, if you really want to, you can change the contrast here from very low contrast to very high or just leave it at whatever the base was at none. But Blender will actually change how your footage looks uh, based on this view transform here. If you want your footage to look li like it looked in the camera when you shot it, you just change the view transform to standard. Okay, so now that we've got, we've already read in our footage and our image sequence, I'm gonna come back here to our motion tracking tab and just close these windows. Now let's go ahead and open up our footage just like we did before. Now we can go ahead and start placing trackers. So to do a screen replacement, you technically only need four trackers. I put a ton of trackers on this image because I wanted the practice because this was something again that I was working on myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my model to perspective, my motion model and my match to previous frame. And then I'm just gonna click normalize. And now I'm going to place these trackers by hitting control and clicking on the track. So I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna place a tracker on each of these points. And since I changed this motion model to perspective, each of these trackers is a perspective tracker. So I'm gonna go through now and just use the perspectives here or put the points on each of these corners. Again, if you were really doing a screen replacement, then you wouldn't have to do this because the screen would actually cover over everything. But it's also a good practice to do. And uh, by removing these trackers, then you actually allow yourself to add reflections back over everything. Okay, so I have all of my trackers set. I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard to select them all. Come down here to the tracking menu and hit the track to end button right here. All right, so you can see these three trackers kind of had an issue because my thumb messed up, but uh, all the other trackers, they just stuck like glue to each of their tracks. So, in order to fix that, let's go ahead and go back to the beginning of our timeline. And then I'm just going to scroll through until the tracker, I'm going to just choose one tracker, which is this one right here. I'm going to scroll through until that tracker gets lost. And then I'm just going to move it myself by hitting G and just move it a little bit. And then 
and we'll go to the next frame and move it just a little bit and then I can just hit alt and my right arrow key to just track that forward until it gets messed up again and just kind of manually track this one through. Okay, so I've gone through and just tracked everything out. Um, now we can go ahead and add in our masks. So I'm gonna change my tracking workspace to my masking works workspace. And I'm just going to come here to the masks and say new. And this mask I'm going to call uh, tracker uh, cover. And then this is very important. I'm gonna come down here. If you hit N on your keyboard, you can open up the properties panel. In the properties panel, I'm going to add in a new mask. And each time I'm going to draw a mask around uh, one of these trackers, I'm going to add in a new mask layer. So I'm just going to change this to 0001, the name. And for me, how I'm going to mask is I'm going to mask from the lower left hand corner all the way up over and then back down and this way if I have any issue with uh, a mask I can just count uh, and figure out which which mask the issue is so let's go ahead and come down here and I'm gonna just go ahead and control click I'm gonna just add in a mask a little bit outside of my dot that's important your mask needs to cover and extend outside of the tracker outside of your tracking point and then to close that mask, I'm gonna hit Alt-C. I'm gonna grab all of these points and hit V and single, align single. And then I'm just gonna go like this and change that a little bit. Maybe bring these in just a hair. So now I have a circle. Uh, I'm gonna come back here to the tracking workspace and deselect by uh, going here to select and deselect all. Then go into my mask masking workspace with my my mask all selected, I'm going to shift select this tracker and then hit control and P. And you can see down here, this active point has a parent. Now, if I drag through my timeline, you can see that my mask has been parented to this spot. Now I'm gonna real quick go through and do that for all of my trackers here. Okay, so now if I go ahead and scroll back and forth, you can see that all of my trackers have gone ahead and animated all of my masks. Now, the only other thing that we need to do is uh, real quick, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I go here to mask seven, I need to animate my opacity here because when my finger is over this mask, I don't want the in-paint node that we're gonna use to mess up how my finger looks because uh, it's already covering over a tracker. So I'm going to go ahead and find a spot here before. So this right here, we can go ahead and here in the opacity, hit I, and then go one frame forward. Well, now that my finger covers over that mask or that point, and then uh, bring the opacity down to zero and hit I again, and then keep going forward until that comes back in so I can hit I here go one more forward and hit I and I'm just gonna do this for these next three vacuum points and masks that get covered over by my finger okay so now I've gone ahead and animated the opacity on those to turn them on and off at the right times so now we can go ahead and jump over into our compositing workspace that we already set up. Let's go ahead and hit a shift A and search for a set alpha node. And then we're going to just go ahead and grab the image socket here from our footage and drop that into the image. And then we hit shift A one more time and search for a mask node. And we can go ahead and just select our, tra our tracker cover mask that we had. That's all the masks here and we can go ahead and just stick that into the alpha. So now if we control shift click on this, you can see that all we're left with is what our mask was. So we need to add in an in invert node. So shift A, search invert, just stick an invert node. And now you can see we're left with footage 
with holes cut out where our trackers were. Let's go ahead and hit Shift A and grab an in paint node. So in paint, and now if we go ahead and increase the distance here, uh, increase the distance, you can see that pixels are being pulled from outside and then brought inside. So we just keep increasing the distance until bam. Now you can see some of my masks were a little bit bigger than others. So there's two fixes for that. Uh, one fix is I can go back and just shrink my mask a little bit. So, uh, or I can just increase this more. So I can go and maybe add a value of 30. And on the whole, that looks pretty good. So anyway, you can do this for any type of tracker removal. You can do this for tracker removals on phones, but if you have trackers in your scene or even other objects that are small in your scene that you wanna get rid of, this is a great method to do that. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time.